Hello everyone! In today's video, I'll be showcasing the entire assembly process of the Make It RC FFRSE1 chassis with the drag back half in step-by-step -step detail. We've designated this chassis as the FFRSCD. It contains many identical parts as the FFRSC1, but to distinguish it, we'll refer to this chassis variant again as the FFRSCD, in reference to its drag car inspired rear end. Now this is the chassis I designed and used for the 1974 AMC Gremlin drag car build, which I showcased previously on this channel. Just like with our FFR SC1 chassis, we'll be releasing various sizes of the FFR SCD to fit a variety of bodies. In addition to that, we're also happy to size the chassis to custom dimensions upon request, if you have a specific 124th or 125th scale body that you'd like to use. The parts are designed to be 3D printable on a typical hobby grade FDM 3D printer. You'll find a link to the STL files below in the description, along with a link to the compatible hardware and non-printable parts kit, which contains all of the screws, bearings, and other non-3D printable parts you'll need to assemble the chassis. Likewise, a compatible electronic set is also available, which contains the motor, ESC, and servo. We've also posted every part of the chassis on our Shapeway store. Although not the cheapest option, Shapeways can print in a large variety of materials and with high levels of detail. If you're having issues printing specific pieces, or want a higher quality surface finish than what you can print at home, consider ordering a part from Shapeways. If you want more information about this chassis and would like to see it used in a build, check out the 1974 AMC Gremlin build series. I'll be sure to include the link in the description. I'll also put a link to the assembly tutorial video I made for the fully FDM 3D printable FFRSC1 chassis, which although it's not an identical chassis to what I'm building here, it has some good information. Finally, I'll include a video I made showcasing all of the tools I used to build the cars and chassis that you see here on this channel. If you have any questions about what tools I'm using or what I would recommend, go check out that video. I think that's going to do it for the introduction. As always, feel free to contact us if you have any questions, but I think it's time to dive right into the build. You can see all the parts that I printed here. Most of the parts you'll only need to print one of, however there are a few that you'll need to print multiples of, such as the tire halves, wheels, and ladder bars. The quantity of each part that you'll need is specified in our post on Patreon. I went ahead and painted most of the parts that you see here to improve the appearance. Obviously, this is not required, but it will make the finished chassis look a little cooler in my opinion. Let's start by assembling the rear axle. Here's the parts that I'll be using to start, which are included in the hardware kit that I mentioned before. The screw that you see here is a 1x6mm screw that you'll find in the same bag as the drive shaft socket. Install both bearings into the front half of the axle as shown, and then slide the pinion gear through the center of the bearings. Next slide on the drive shaft socket and ensure the holes on the socket are aligned with the pinion gear shaft, then carefully thread in the 1x6mm screw. The socket should spin with minimal resistance and the axle should look just like this. Next get the threaded axle shaft and ring gear. Since the rear axle I'm building is pretty narrow, I decided to cut off some of the excess axle shaft using a rotary tool to improve the appearance of the finished chassis. Next glue the ring gear to the center of the axle shaft. Make sure to measure and ensure the gear is in the center. The next parts to get are two bearings, two hex wheel mounts, and two M2 nuts. 
First slide on a bearing onto each end of the axle shaft and then thread a wheel mount onto each end. Thread the wheel mounts on so the bearings are seated in the axle housing and the gears are aligned and can rotate smoothly. If you made sure the gear is centered, then about the same amount of axle shaft should stick out on both ends, as seen here. Make sure you are placing the axle so the ring gear is oriented correctly. There is a notch in the axle housing that allows enough room for the ring gear to spin. After ensuring that the axle can rotate without much resistance, glue the wheel mounts into place. Here's how it should look so far. Before securing each half of the axle housing together, make sure to apply some grease to the gears. To secure each axle housing piece, use four 1x3 screws and four silver 1x5 machine screws. I drilled out some of the holes to make inserting the screws a little easier. The longer 1x5 screws go into the holes in the center and the 1x3 screws go into the holes on the outer sections of the axle. The M2 nuts will be used to secure the wheels. For now, I'll just thread them onto the axle. Here's a look at the completed axle assembly. To secure the ladder bars, use four 1x4 machine screws. Make sure you orient the ladder bars correctly, just like I have here. To secure the panhard bar to the axle, use a 1.6x5 machine screw. This is what you should have so far. We'll be putting the rear axle aside for now and turning our attention to the front suspension and steering assembly, starting with the steering knuckles. Along with the 3D printed steering knuckles, get four bearings, the two front axle shafts, and two wheel mounts. Install the bearings into the steering knuckle and then slide the front axle shaft through the center of the bearings and finally thread on the wheel mount. Make sure the axle is sticking out in the correct direction and they look just like the knuckles I have here. Here I'm quickly installing the wheel and a M2 nut and marking where I wanted to cut off the excess axle. Again, this is just to improve the appearance of the finished chassis as I don't want too much excess axle shaft sticking out. <laughs> 
I reassembled the knuckles just like I did before, this time gluing the wheel mounts into place. Make sure not to use too much glue which could cause the bearings to lock up, and also make the wheel mount tight enough to limit the axle play, but not so tight that the axle cannot spin freely. Next, get two 1.6 by 10 machine screws. These will be what the tie rods connect to. Glue them to the knuckles, just like I have here, making sure that they are oriented correctly. We'll set the steering knuckles aside briefly and glue the two tie rod halves together. Next we'll want to cut a section of the 2mm tube to glue inside the hole on the lower mount. This is what the steering center link will slide through. Since the chassis I'm building is relatively narrow, I want to make this tube as short as possible to allow for as much steering angle as I can get. I then glued the tube to the front lower suspension mount. Once the glue on the steering knuckles and tie rods is dry, get four of the largest size O-rings and two M1.6 nuts. Slide on an O-ring, the tie rod, another O-ring, and then the nut, just like I've done here. To prevent the nut from coming loose, I use some Loctite. Here's what the knuckles should look like so far. Set them aside for the moment and get four 1.6 by 5 screws. Use those screws to secure the center front suspension mounts to the lower mount. Make sure the orientation is correct, this is what it should look like so far. For the next step, we'll need all the parts shown here, which includes the lower and upper front suspension mounts, four bearings, two springs cut to the length you desire, four 1.6x5 screws, and the two steering knuckles. Place each bearing into their spots on the upper and lower mounts, and then place the knuckles into the center of the bearings and the springs on top of the knuckles as shown. Here I'm threading the screws into the holes prior to installing the upper mount, as this makes lining up the upper mount and securing it a little easier. Finally, secure the upper mount to the top. The longer and stiffer the springs are, the more difficult it will be to secure the upper mount and it will require more force to move the knuckle up and down, so keep this in mind when you decide how long you want to make the springs and whether you want to choose a hard or soft spring. Make sure your assembly looks like what I have here. 
Also, make sure the steering knuckles can move smoothly without much resistance. For the next step, you'll need two 1.6x8 machine screws. These will be glued to the other end of the tie rods and is where the center link will connect to. Again, make sure you glue them in the correct direction, just like I have here. The next parts you'll need are four of the medium size O-rings, two center link ends, two M1.6 nuts, and the 1.5 millimeter steel rod. Keep in mind that the length of the center link is what determines your toe angle. I took some measurements to figure out how long I wanted to cut the 1.5 millimeter steel rod. Also, like always, remember to test fit the center link before gluing to ensure it's the length that you want. Slide the O-ring onto the 1.6 by eight screw we glued earlier, followed by the center link end, another O-ring, and finally a M1.6 nut. Do this for both sides. Again, I like to use a little Loctite to prevent the nuts from coming loose. Here's what you should have so far. Make sure your assembly looks like the one I have here. Again, after test fitting to ensure the length is correct, I glued each center link end to the steel rod. Make sure your assembly is the same as mine and that it can steer left and right with minimal resistance. Next, get the steering arm along with a 1x6 machine screw. Glue the screw to the steering arm, making sure that it is oriented correctly. It should be sticking out of the flat side of the steering arm, like shown here. Once the glue is dry, press fit it onto the top of the steering knuckle. The front suspension and steering assembly is now complete, so we can move on to assembling the chassis. To secure the front and rear half together, use eight 1.6x4 screws. Next, we're going to install the steering servo, which is included with the electronic set linked below in the description. Along with the servo, we'll need the servo arm and the smallest screw that comes with the servo to secure the arm to the servo. 
To secure the servo to the chassis, we'll need the servo mounts and four 1.6x4 screws. Make sure you orient the servo mounts correctly and mount the servo into the correct holes on the chassis, just like what I've done here. Next, we'll need the motor mount and two 1.6x5 screws. Again, make sure to use the correct holes on the chassis to secure the motor mount so the motor doesn't sit too far forward or back. At this point, we're ready to install the rear axle assembly that was made previously. Use two 1x8 machine screws to secure the ladder bars to the chassis and a 1.6x5 machine screw to secure the panhard bar to the chassis. The axle should be able to move up and down fairly easily. Next we'll make and install the drive shaft using the parts that you see here. You'll need the motor, N20 drive shaft socket, drive shaft ball ends, and the 2mm steel rod. I like to put the motor and drive shaft socket into place to get an idea of how long I'll need to make the drive shaft. The length will vary depending on the wheelbase of your chassis. Cut the steel rod to that length and make sure to test fit it before gluing. There should be just a little bit of play when pushing the drive shaft back and forth between the motor and rear axle so the axle doesn't bind when moving up and down. Once you know it's the correct length, glue on the drive shaft ball ends to each end of the steel rod. To make securing the motor to the motor mount easier, I temporarily removed the motor mount from the chassis and used two 1.6x6 machine screws to secure the motor to the mount. I applied a little grease to the drive shaft ends before putting it in place and once again securing the motor mount to the chassis. 
We can now mount the front suspension and steering assembly to the chassis using four 1.6 by 5 screws. For this particular front suspension assembly, I needed to remove some material from the chassis so the steering will go to full lock. This is only the case for narrow width chassis. The chassis is really coming together at this point, not much more left to do. Next we'll make the steering rod. You'll need the smallest size o-rings, the 1.5mm rod, the steering link end, and a M1 nut. You'll want to cut the 1.5mm steel rod to about 25mm in length, and then glue each steering arm end to the rod, ensuring that they are oriented correctly. Place an o-ring onto the machine screw that you glued to the steering arm, followed by the steering arm end, another o-ring, and the nut. Here's what it should look like. At this point I'll go ahead and install the rear springs. I like to wait to do this so that I don't have to worry about them flying out while I'm building the chassis. Next let's install the rear tub pieces. Use six 1x3 screws to mount them. To conclude this build, we'll install the wheels. Press fit each tire over the wheel and use glue to secure each half together. Finally, use the M2 nuts to secure each wheel to the chassis. At this point the chassis is complete. All it needs now is the remaining electronics and a body, then it's ready to hit the track. If you're interested in seeing that process, I'd again recommend you check out the videos I made showcasing the build process of this 74 AMC Gremlin I built using this chassis. Also be on the lookout for more projects I do in the future using this chassis. As I said in the beginning, links to the STL files and parts used are below in the description. I hope this tutorial was helpful, let us know if you have any questions, and good luck with your project. That's going to be all for today's video, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.